at nine o'clock at night because I don't want to spend the last 20 years of my life looking back thinking I could have done more with the moment I was Lord Mayor. So that's some of the contextual things that I wanted to, to, to give in terms of some lessons uh, that I wanted to give you. So firstly, lesson number one, it's not all about the Mayor, uh, but also lesson number one is it's not all about you as planners. Um, in fact, it's not about the councillors either. And I think it's very easy in our jobs to sit around in an office in a workplace environment and think that we know the answers or that the mayor has told us to do this, et cetera, et cetera. For me, it's actually about societies, it's about communities, and ultimately it comes down to people. And I do think that we need that strongly reinforced. You need to be able to tell your elected members that. You need to be able to communicate that to your staff. It is about people. We don't move cars through our cities, we move people through our cities. We don't want more cyclists, we want more people moving in more efficient ways. You know, don't be afraid to actually get out there and talk to people. It doesn't take long and once you've established those relationships and that trust makes a huge amount of difference because uh, I'll give you a bit of earth shattering uh, information here. Most of them don't really care about planning. Uh, in fact, they don't even care about your good ideas. Most of the small businesses don't want anything to do with cycling or public transport. They actually just want more cars outside their business because they need to put food on their family's table and they're worried about how they're going to survive and they don't really care. So this sense of getting out there and engaging people is important. Lesson two from being Lord Mayor, progress. Everyone wants progress but no one really wants change. I'm living with that in Adelaide because there's a huge amount happening right now. The truth is that we are change agents. We have spent our entire life developing change. We get change, we see change uh, come on our tables and we have to actually implement that change. And so we understand it, but we never understand why the community doesn't. The research says the longer something stays the same, the more people think it was right and are more opposed to doing something differently. So we move the malls, balls uh, in the city that have been in the Rondo Mall forever and a day by three metres. Uh, I got absolutely slaughtered on the same day the Lord Mayor of Brisbane was asking people to save their food and water because of impending floods. So it's that sense of, um, you know, once again, everyone wants progress, but no one wants change. So we really need as planners to actually understand this, that people don't want change. That's their innate place. We need to live with it. We need to work with it and we actually need to run with it. And instead of actually being upset by it, we really need to understand the psychology, the actual science behind change, uh, and also the process of time, which I'll talk about in a little bit. It is actually uh, not uh, a threat. It must be an opportunity and we need to work with it. So my second recommendation, are you are change agents. You need to actually understand change and how it actually reacts with individuals and how you need to work with that. Lesson three, it's not what you know, but how you communicate it. Truth is that most of you in the room are really good planners, but the challenge is communicating it to a broader public. The truth is that most people aren't stupid, it's actually that you're not communicating the issues appropriately. Don't blame them, they actually are human beings that are intelligent, it's your problem, it's your fault, you need to work out how to communicate. Make it clear, make it simple, speak clear, clearly, ask questions. No one wants to be told. A small business owner will not be lectured, but they can be asked, is 40 kilometres an hour uh, better in terms of a car driving past your business? Will they see your sign more effectively? Will it be easier for them to pull into a car park if their car is going slower? Will it be safer for people who are shopping in that street? Will outdoor dining be nicer? because most small businesses will say it's better for cars to go 50. So it's really about asking the right questions and getting people to work it out. Um, go, it's about going for that light bulb moment where you actually want to relate to them in their cognitive processes, in their universe, and actually get them to work it out. I sit in audiences, not of planners, but regular people, and I see light bulbs going off because I'm using the language that they can understand. So recommendation number three, be frank and fearless using simple language and ideas. You as professionals have to actually state the truth. You need to be honest. You need to challenge people, but you need to do it in a way that's simple and actually creates ideas in other people's heads. Lesson four, culture trumps logic. Now, facts are great, 
uh, we all uh, know the answers in this room, uh, but the truth is it is actually okay to be different. If planners, technical planners rule the world, I'm going to tell you right now it would be a really boring place. Sorry to say that to you. Uh, and this, this sense of the fact that it's okay for the elected members to make variations because the decisions that elected members make in Adelaide will actually make Adelaide different to Sydney or Amsterdam or Vancouver and that is actually a part of the process and we actually need to be uh, celebrate that. We actually need to be open to the fact that elected members are put there to define culture and it won't always be logical but then again uh, you've got to actually make mistakes in an entrepreneurial ecosystem. You've got to create that environment and uh, you know uh, we wouldn't have uh, great art, great architecture, paradigm shifts in thinking if we didn't actually make those leaps of faith and do things that are not logical. The Opera House might not have been built, the Harbour Bridge might have looked much more simple, those sorts of things. Um, so go with it, uh, play with it, uh, use it to get uh, strategic change in your organisation, in your community. Capture hearts, capture minds, uh, create ideas and, and opportunities. So recommendation number four, dare to dream and encourage your leaders to dream as well. Lesson five, connect today with tomorrow. So some of you may have seen the presentation uh, on Splash Adelaide we're doing in the city of Adelaide. Truth is that most people don't connect with strategic plans. The media write it up as yet another bullshit vision that will never get implemented and it's not yet funded, it's not going to happen and it's just pie in the sky. The community are absolutely not engaged in the big picture. They are engaged in what is happening in their street, what is happening in their city. They are tactile, they physically want to see change. Cities are going to change and there is going to be a new operating system around digital cities. Hands up if you've got younger people in your organisation that know more about technology than you. Yeah, well, think about the fact that they're technically better equipped to plan the future of cities than you guys are. And that is a real challenge to you. So we are now talking about billions of chips collecting data uh, and they're all going to be completely connected. We are going to see a common language of binary digits actually change how cities work. In the near future, we're talking uh, wearable technology. So uh, QBE Insurance have got Fitbits for all their staff. Now they measure how far they work. They've increased their productivity of their employees. Uh, now uh, Samsung, about Apple, are about to start releasing watches that are actually going to have heart rate monitors that are going to start to geotag where you're going, uh, what sort of physical activity you're doing. We're talking about a whole new level of social media here and there's going to be a new pecking order. So if you're not on social media and I am at stephenyale.com, tweet away because the more people I'm engaging, the more clout I've got, the more ability I've got to influence more people in my community and increase Adelaide's sphere of influence. Um, online retail is just the tip of the iceberg uh, and it really is going to change how people, businesses, neighbourhoods, metropolitan areas and countries actually operate. This whole new operating of system uh, of cities. A uh, new era of uh, behaviour, of information, resource use. Uh, people and cities are never going to be the same. And as an urban planner, if you haven't even got your head around this, either get out of the game now or gear up because cities are not going to be anything like they used to be. So uh, digital skills up to speed. Lesson seven, I walk everywhere, I ride a bicycle to work, um, I use a tram, I drive an electric vehicle, I live a thousand metres from the town hall and I'm not lucky, I listen to my professor in planning because he actually lives around the corner from me and he lives about 1,050 metres from the town hall. Uh, I am in a four person household and I use amount electricity for two people and I use water for two people. So uh, how are you guys doing as planners? You always preach these stuff, you know, I'm not even going to show you but how many of you really ride a bicycle to work? How many of you are driving four-cylinder cars? What about using public transport? Are you the change you want to see in your city? So for me, uh, I'd really encourage you to be a part of that community as well. Get out there and actually connect to that community. Because uh, I have learned the more that I give, the more that I get back. So my challenge for you is to look in the mirror 
and see the city that you want to actually live in and actually be a part of that city? How can you improve as a person? Uh, what sort of training development do you need? And also what sort of training and development do you need your mayor to be the mood of the city, to be that a physical extrapolation of the city. If your mayor is overweight, or if your mayor doesn't understand the digital skills, you need to somehow work out how he's going to be fit and healthy so he's leading a fit and healthy community. You need to actually challenge him for his digital skills. So the final recommendation there is be the change you want to see in your city. So you're going to get lots of speeches. I am wrapping up, uh, and you won't remember anything. But I do want to go through these recommendations and I want you to remember one of them and physically do them as a result of this uh, presentation. So, recommendation one, talk to strangers. You've got the best excuse here. Lord Mayor said I could introduce myself, but knock on the streets of your local main street. Get out there and talk to your community. Recommendation two, you are the change agents. Understand change and don't just think they're idiots who don't get it. Understand change and work with it. Recommendation be frank and fearless using simple languages and ideas. Learn to communicate on their wavelength and tell politicians what they need to know, not what they want to hear. Number four, dare to dream and encourage others to dream. Don't be afraid to not do everything by the book. Number five, infuse change into the system by co-creating with businesses and communities today to get change. Number six, Get your digital skills up to speed. You need to be a part of the 21st century information economy. Number seven, be the change you want to see in the city. Set the example that you seem to be telling everyone else but might not actually be doing. Look in the mirror and think about who am I, who is the city, how does the city need to improve and how do I need to improve. Finally, visit Adelaide. It's going off. We're only the fifth most livable city on the face of the planet. We soon will be number one. We're doing some really exciting, innovative stuff. Uh, the, the absolute landscape of our city is changing. You're always welcome. In particular, your PACs have a conference guide on Velo City. It's the Global Cycling Conference. We are about to become the greatest cycling city in the Southern Hemisphere. So get on your bike, come down to Adelaide, drink some of the world's best wine, have some great uh, food and beer, and we'll see you in Adelaide soon. Cheers. <laughs>